Richard Fenton and Andrea Waltz are the authors of the best-selling book, Go For No, and they are transforming their audience's thinking, taking them from disliking and fearing rejection to feeling excited and empowered to grow their business. Their Go For No message is being embraced by a wide variety of businesses and industries to rave reviews and even more importantly, exceptional results. Here's Richard and Andrea as they share their strategies with another thrilled audience. Okay, let's see a show of hands of those of you who would like to hear the word no more often. Okay, we got about half the room. That's not too bad. A little bit of work to do. Um, let's see a show of hands of those of you who are going to refuse to raise your hand today no matter what we ask. Okay, and there's always one troublemaker down in front. There he is. Yes. Okay, now we do have to get something out of the way because inevitably what happens when Richard and I walk out onto the stage is people are wondering, what's the deal with these two? Are they married or what? Well, we are in fact married, which actually is a go for no story in and of itself. If I could impress this guy, Harold, now he was the district manager, right? He's the big decision maker. If I could impress Harold on this store visit, I thought maybe they would give me some more time to improve my sales. So Harold comes in, we have donuts and coffee, the store opens up at 10 o'clock. In walks this very well-dressed gentleman. I walk up to the man with my best, hi, how can I help you greeting? And the customer says, I need to buy an entire wardrobe of clothing. And I thought, here it is. This is my magical moment. I am gonna show Harold what a spectacular salesperson I can be. And for the next half hour, I took care of this man and he bought an entire wardrobe of clothing. I mean, suit, sport coat, shirts, ties, shoes, socks, belts, underwear, collar pin, pocket square. It was the whole nine yards, right? Came to about $1,100, which for the time frame, this is 1980, it was a big sale. I get all done, I ring it up, I send the customer on his way, I come back into the store and I'm waiting for Harold to congratulate me now on my spectacular sale. And he doesn't say anything. So I did the only thing I could think to do. I started moving towards him. I mean, I literally inched my way across the store until we were side by side next to the cash register. And he finally threw me a bone. He said, hey, kid. He said, that was a nice sale. I said, yeah, man, did you see that? That was $1,100. That was a good one, huh? He says, yes, that was a very nice sale, son. And then there was this long moment of silence. And then Harold proceeded to ask me the question that would change the course of the rest of my life. He said, out of curiosity, Richard, he said, what did that customer say no to? And I have to tell you, I got a little upset. I mean, I'm trying to impress this guy, right? I'm trying to show him what a spectacular salesperson I can be. And he's asking me some weird question about what did the guy say no to? I said, were you not watching the sale I just had? I said, that guy bought $1,100 worth of merchandise. He bought a suit. He bought a sport coat. He bought slacks. I started running through the list of everything that the guy had bought. And Harold said, whoa, time out. He, he said, maybe you didn't understand the question. He said, I'm not asking you what the man said yes to. He said, yes is the easy part of any sales transaction. You just take the ticket. You look at everything that's listed there. He said, those are all of the yeses. He said, that has been established. He goes, the question I'm asking you is, what did he say no to? And I stopped and I thought about it and I reviewed the sale from beginning to end and I realized that that customer had not said no to anything. Every single thing I offered him, he said yes to. I said, Harold, he didn't say no to anything. And then Harold asked me the other really great question. He said, well, then how did you know he was done? Well, I'm going to tell you how I knew he was done. I was a young guy. I wasn't making a lot of money. I had never gone into a menswear store in my life and spent over $1,000 on myself. The idea of going into a menswear store and spending $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 on clothing on myself was so far outside of my mental consciousness that I didn't even consider it. It never crossed my mind that someone would come in and spend that kind of money. So when you got to my mental spending limit, you were done. I would shut the sale down, take you to the cash register, ring it up, and send you on your way. 
Harold said, you know, he goes, I'll tell you, Richard, he goes, I watched you sell. And he said, you know what? He said, you're not half bad. He said, but your fear of the word no is going to kill you. And then fortunately, he added the final little magical words. He said, but you know what? He said, if you could just get over that. He said, I think you could become one of the great ones. Here's the problem. Rich and I are standing up here and we're saying to you, intentionally increase your failure rate. Go out there and get more no's. And that sounds just fabulous until you realize you don't like hearing no. And that some, some people take it personally and they feel personally rejected and it doesn't feel good. And if something doesn't feel good, well, how long are you going to keep it up? You're not going to keep it up very long at all. In fact, you might slow down, you might quit, you might give up forever because it just doesn't feel good. So the idea is, how do we make no start to feel good? Well, first of all, you absolutely can. This is a, just a thought process, you guys. That's all it is. And I read a great quote from Jack Canfield just the other day, and he said, you know, to achieve your dreams, it's going to take hard work, but it doesn't have to be a struggle. And that's what this whole go for no concept is about. It's not about getting out there and struggling through these no's and suffering. It's about making it a fun process where your emotional reaction is no longer tied to the result of whether you get yes or whether you get no. Well, we were giving this presentation in Los Angeles a few years ago, and a guy named Stuart Glist contacted us and said, hey, he goes, my daughter wrote this little book. Her name is Hadley. She did this for her first grade class. Hadley was six years old at the time. And he goes, you got to see this. Well, he gets us a copy of the book. We actually bought the rights to this from Hadley. It's so amazing because this is go for no through the eyes of a child. Okay. And it's just the way you see it on the screen over here. One day I asked my daddy for a cookie by Hadley, illustrated by Hadley, your standard little four page first grade project. And I want to read you this because, like I said, this is through Hadley's eyes. One day I asked my daddy for a cookie, but my daddy didn't let me have a cookie. So I asked for a cookie. <laughs> but he didn't let me have a cookie. So I asked for a cookie. But he didn't let me have a cookie. So I asked for a cookie. He let me have a cookie. The end. Is that great? So the idea here is that your reaction to yes and no should be of equal emotional intensity. You've got to bring it into the neutral zone. Now, what we typically do, because here's the thing, we have all been taught and trained to live in a go for yes world, get yeses, don't get no's. Oh, don't look like you're failing. Don't look like you made a mistake, right? That's how we've all been taught and trained, and it's a big, big issue. And so now we're telling you, get out there and start hearing no's, and it's okay. You've got to reprogram that. So what happens to us in our go for yes world is we put ourselves on an emotional yes and no roller coaster. Basically, we get on a roller coaster. We get a few yeses, we're up on the roller coaster. We get a couple no's, oh, back down. Now we don't feel so good. Maybe it's a little depressing. And maybe, maybe we even tell ourselves things like, wow, you're not doing very good. Wow, you're, you're, you're not going to make it. Who are you kidding? Negative messages. And then maybe we get a couple yeses and we're back up. And it's back up and down and up and down on this emotional roller coaster. And how do you feel after going on a roller coaster for 90 seconds? Yeah, it's exhausting. Well, who wants to continue with that? That's not fun. Well, your business is nothing but fun. It's fantastic. Great, great services, great opportunity. And so the idea is to start having some fun. Get rid of the struggle. Get rid of the struggle. So how do you do it? Well, one of the ways is you get off that emotional roller coaster. You start getting some no's. That's exactly what you want. You should start celebrating those no's. Okay. Now, we have a friend in Chicago who doesn't have our love of food. Okay? When we tell our friend Jay how much money we have spent on a dinner out, Jay will take that amount and he will divide it by the going rate of a Big Mac. <laughs> He'll go, $300 for dinner? I could get a Big Mac for $2.79. I could have had 106 Big Macs. I mean, he will sit and he will do the math because dining out is not his thing. But Jay just traded in his $10,000 stereo system for a new $25,000 stereo system. 
because Jay loves music. And until fairly recently, Andrew and I, we love music too, but I mean, we just don't invest a lot in a stereo system. We had a $99 Sony boombox with the detachable speakers, right, that had sand on it from the last time we'd taken it to the beach. Because for us, music was not the thing. The question is, if Jay went to work as a mater d or a weight person in the great steakhouse, you think it might be a challenge for him to offer the $85 Kobe bone-in ribeye steak, right, or the $150 bottle of wine? Yeah, it would be. And if we were working in a stereo system, you think it would be fair to the customer if the customer came in and said, what's your best stereo? And I said, the cheap one. I mean, right, because to me, I'm just not spending the money. You see, what we think is a lot to spend on something is irrelevant. It only matters what the customer thinks. And then finally, who have you prejudged? And you know what? It's not your fault. Again, we've lived in this go for yes world with this mentality of, well, I'm just going to pick the people that I think are going to say yes. I'll just pick and choose and I'll decide for someone else what I think they should know about. Should they know about the mobile service? Hmm, I don't know. Should they, should they know about the cashback card? I don't know. And we start picking and choosing for people. That is not how you build trust. So I want to share with you a really fabulous strategy that you can also start implementing and you can implement it immediately. And that's to start having what we call no goals instead of typical yes goals. Now I'm not telling you to have no goals. What we're saying is have a goal for the number of no's you're going to hear in a given day or week or month. And you know, Having yes goals is great, right? Yes goals is the goals for the number of people that you want to add onto your team, the dollars, the sales you want to generate, right? All of those, those numbers that we always have. But the problem with those yes goals is what tends to happen when we hit our yes goal. When we hit our yes goal, what do we always do? We stop. Yeah, we're like on this great roll, and then we hit the yes goal, and it's like, okay, we're done. Done with that. Don't have to continue. And that's the insidious thing. Richard and I did the exact same thing in our business. When we first started, we had a yes goal of speaking about four times a month, about once a week. So we would get on the phone and start calling and emailing and sending out packages. And sometimes we would get lucky. And in the very first week, we would book all four presentations. Well, what do you think we did with the rest of the month? Yeah, we just hung out. We were like, oh, we're good. We're done. We got the four programs. Funny thing about that, our income was always exactly the same. Oh, we were so frustrated. How do we get our income up? But we're always hitting our yes goal. Well, we said, wait a minute. We just wrote go for no. We should actually test some of these strategies out. So let's set a no goal for the number of companies that we want to say no to us. So we set a no goal of having 100 companies say no to us in a given month. So we get on the phone, we get a yes, we'd be like, great, but we've got a lot of no's to hear. We get up to 65 no's, we'd have more business than we knew what to do with. He actually told me, we've got to stop. We have 8% of the people are in the game after the fourth no, and they're getting more than half the business because they didn't quit, because they were there when the fruit finally ripened. They took advantage of this great thing that we call persistence. It's an amazing opportunity. And you know what? It's not something you have to spend years to develop. You can decide right now that that is a tool in your toolkit. Now, when we started, we asked you three questions. We're gonna ask you one of those questions one more time. Can we see a show of hands of those of you who would like to hear the word no more often in your business? Ooh, then our mission is accomplished. Thank you so much, you Thank guys. Thank you very much, Thank everybody. You. Go for no. The philosophy that is literally reprogramming the way people think about failure, rejection, and achieving success all over the world.